I was speaking to a vendor yesterday and that vendor was someone who I'd entered into a transaction with five years ago, believe it or not. It was a 15 year agreement, which means that it's got about 10 years left to run on the property. And it was an unusual one in as much as, well, in as much as they're all unusual, but it was a bespoke agreement that worked well for the vendor and worked well for me. So five years ago, the property was worth 78,000 pounds, give or take. The vendor was emigrating overseas and what they wanted to do was just to be finished with the property. They didn't want to rent it out. They tried to sell it, but it had a covenant on it. Now this is quite interesting. When the purchaser had bought the property, their solicitor had missed the fact that only Welsh nationals could purchase the property. The vendor, the person that sold it to me was actually English, but that had been missed, completely missed when they purchased it 10, 12 years before. Now perhaps there could have been a legal challenge to that. I don't know how lawful that is. I don't know how easy it is to overturn, but everyone that was trying to buy this property at 78,000 was trying to negotiate quite substantial distance discounts because of this covenant, this restrictive covenant. And so what I said to the vendor was, well, I'll just give you 78,000 pounds for it. And they were over the moon, but I'll give it to you in 15 years time. They were happy with that. So long as I paid them a monthly fee. So I pay them 278 pounds per month, which is actually a 4.2% return on their money, which they're delighted with. They don't have to worry about letting the property. They don't have to worry about compliance. In Wales, you need to be a, a registered landlord. You have to actually do a course for a day. They don't have to worry about maintenance, voids, anything at all. They just get their 278 pounds every single month. And for me, it was brilliant because I got a 100% mortgage in effect. What I've actually got is an option to buy at 78,000 pounds, so long as I pay the monthly fee every month and I get complete control of the property for the 15 years. They're in effect, it's a rent to rent agreement with an option to buy, but it's a purchase lease option. And, and people get very hung up on what these agreements are, are called. It doesn't matter. What matters to me is it costs me nothing to do the deal, absolutely zero, yet, I'm making around 150 pounds every single month. So after I paid the letting agent, now this property is about five hours from my house. So I don't drive to it at all. In fact, I've been there once after I'd um, met with the vendor and we'd done the deal. I went to just check the property and check that I was happy with it. So I employ a letting agent to manage it. After the tenants have paid their rent, the letting agents deduct their fees and the vendor has been paid, there's about 150 pounds every single month. Now, the reason I tell you about this deal that I did five years ago is because the tenant has just asked to buy the property. Now, they've offered 105,000 pounds to buy the property. And what I did straight away, the letting agent got in touch with me and asked if I was interested in selling. And I'm always interested in selling, as you know. SPI investors should always be looking to maximize their returns because if I can make some money out of this property, and put that into marketing for more properties, I can turn it into five or 10 other properties. And so the old adage of, you know, never sell property just is something to buy and hang on to is absolutely right if you're a traditional investor. It's absolutely right if you're using Robert Kiyosaki's vocab in terms of doodads. Robert Kiyosaki talks about doodads being things that you spend your money on, that you waste your money on. And so you don't wanna sell an asset in order to pay for a doodad. So this would be an asset. I don't wanna sell it if all I'm gonna go and do is buy a jacuzzi or a fast car or a holiday because then I'm losing an income stream. However, if you sell an asset to buy more assets and then your cash flow goes up, then that's a very sensible use of the asset, very sensible way of selling it. And of course, at the moment, we're in a seller's market. And so if someone's coming to me wanting to buy, this tenant has only got one property to buy. It's the one he already lives in. He wants to stay in it. He wants to improve it, etc. So I can negotiate quite hard with him. So my response to the letting agent was 
absolutely, I'm interested in selling. Yes, this is something that I would like to do. And then I said, what were they thinking? And they said around 100, 105. And I said, well, I'd be interested at 105. Let's, let me go away and, and value the property accurately. However, in the meantime, can you check that they've got proof of funds? Can you check that they're eligible for a mortgage, etc., etc.? Turns out they're a cash buyer. And so I then got in touch with the vendor. And it was a very interesting conversation because the vendors are switched on, gentlemen. I wanted to let him know that actually, although we've got a 15 year agreement, I may now be exercising that option earlier than we both anticipated. My expectation was to make my £150 a month for the 15 years, which is a fantastic infinite return because as I say, I've put nothing into this other than the legals at the start, probably spent about a thousand pounds, maybe 1500 pounds on legals at the start of this transaction. And so my ROI was 10 months or so to get all my money back out. And then I'm in pure profit moving forwards. But the question that the vendor asked me is, how are you going to decide whether you sell to the tenant or whether you hang on to this for another 10 years? And I thought that'd be a great topic for an episode on the channel. So let me talk you through my thinking, my, my strategy behind it. And it does tie into what will I do with the money? So that 150 pounds a month for the next 10 years is pretty substantial. So 12 months at 150 pounds a month is 1800 pounds a year times 10 years is 18,000 pounds. So we've got 18,000 pounds of cash flow there, but it won't be 18,000 pounds because that 278 a month is fixed. So I'm just gonna pay the, le the, the landlord that every single month. But what will happen is rents will go up because inflation, the rents today won't be the same rents as 10 years time. So maybe it's gonna become 20,000 pounds over the next 10 years, not an insignificant amount of money, 2,000 pounds per year with no money left in the deal. But that doesn't mean you hang on to it. There's a few reasons. One, the market might drop, so I might not be able to sell it as much in 10 years time as I can today, unlikely. But if it was three years before the end of the option, I'd definitely be more inclined to sell it now because a lot can happen in three years. Whereas in 10 years, one would expect higher capital growth, even if the market drops in the meantime. Now we've seen phenomenal capital growth over the last 12, 18 months and so now that's why now is a really good time to be liquidating assets but let's look at how much I'm actually going to liquidate I've got an option to buy at 78,000 the tenant is looking to pay around 105 I may be able to get them a bit higher but let's assume 105 so that's 27,000 pounds cash in my pocket today now that means there's slightly less time involved in managing the letting agent slightly less risk because there's not going to be maintenance there's not going to be voids because i don't own the property anymore the tenant does but i've no longer got the property going up in value so i've got the twenty thousand pounds 18 to twenty thousand pounds that i'll make over the next 10 years if it goes to plan and why wouldn't it? But I've also got the capital growth of that property over the next 10 years as well. So if we assume it's worth £100,000 now, just for ease of maths, it's 105. And we assume capital growth of what, 25%? could easily be 50% over 10 years. If we're very lucky, it could be 100%. But let's go at 25%. My £28,000 today, well, that's gonna nearly double, perhaps even treble over the next 10 years. So in 10 years time, I could be taking 50,000, maybe even 75,000 pounds out of this property, plus the 20 that I've earned along the way. So actually, by cashing in on the 28,000 uh, pounds, sorry, 27,000 pounds now, I'm missing out on a potential 75, 100,000 pounds in 10 years time. So that's one consideration. And I was talking to the, the vendor quite candidly about this. The other consideration is what might I do with the cash now? Well, the first thing is to realize I won't have 27,000 pounds because I've got the letting agents to pay. Most letting agents will have a, a fee written into their letting agent agreement. So I think there's a 2% fee for selling the property. So that's 2% of 105. So that's 2,000 pounds plus change. So now we're at 25,000 pounds. 
I've got my lawyers to pay for the sale. That's going to be around £1,500. So now I'm at £23,500. And then I've got capital gains tax. Now, I've used all my capital gains tax allowance last year and I will use my capital gains tax allowance next year. I use it every single year. So actually I'm gonna be a, a higher rate capital gains tax payer on this property. So I'm actually gonna be paying 28% capital gains tax. So we're knocking off six grand now. So now we're at about 17,000 pounds. And you've gotta look at that 17,000 pounds and think about how hard it can work for you. And so 17,000 pounds I know using our stats will get me about four properties in terms of marketing spends, about three and a bit, nearly 4,000 pounds marketing spend to get a deal. And so what I'm thinking to myself is, is it worth cashing in now and missing this 150 pounds a month, 18, 20,000 pounds over the next 10 years, plus the capital growth, albeit I'll be taxed on both of those as well for about £17,000 now. And I was quite honest with the vendor. I said, I'm quite ambivalent about it. I can use £17,000 now, but it's not the 30 that we initially you know, had in mind. And I think we have to be really accurate with when we're selling deals. But also, it's the opportunities that I then can take advantage of with that £17,000 that will grow into more capital growth and more cash flow. And so I thought I'd share that with you, that, that quandary. And I have to admit, if the tenant goes ahead, I know that I'm not that fussed about selling, so I'm actually gonna go back with a valuation of 110, because now I've added 5,000 pounds to my bottom line. That's another deal that I can go source, another no money down deal because of the, the way that we market. I know that, that I can bring that in for 5,000 pounds. So now I'm looking at five deals. I'm looking at more like 20, 22,000 pounds in, in the bank and um, after tax, and that's looking more attractive. But if the tenant then says, no, it's not worth it. I know I've got a tenant that loves the property. I know I've got a tenant that wants to buy in the future and he can just keep renting it and perhaps we can have a chat in a few years time. And so guys, with these sophisticated solutions, you never know how they're gonna pan out. You never know whether a 15 year agreement's gonna end up being 15 years or actually if you're gonna cash it in in five years or 10 years or 15 years. And here's the thing, it's very important not to get emotional about it. And do you know what the vendor asked me? And this really brought it home, the impact that we're having on our vendors, as well as our investors, as well as our tenants. We talk about that four-way win. Vendors benefiting from interacting with us. Our vision statement is that all that come into, in, come into contact with us leave better off. Our vendors leave better off, our investors leave better off, our tenants leave better off, and of course, we create an income for our families as well. The vendor said to me, if you give me that 78,000 pounds, it's an unencumbered property, I'll then lose my income stream of 278 pounds per month. And that's funding part of my lifestyle overseas. This investor has emigrated to Bulgaria. And I said, well, if you put it into the bank, how much will you get? And they said less than 1%, <laughs> which Bulgarian banks are very similar to UK banks. It's a very low interest rate. And so they were looking at peanuts on that 78,000 pounds per month, rather than the, the 4.2, I think it's 4.27% that we're paying at the moment. And so they're looking at perhaps a half a percent or 0.2% in the bank. So we're actually paying 20 times more than that in our option agreement. And so what I said to the investor was, well, no problem at all. What we can do for you is we can actually replicate that income for you. So if you would like, when we sell to the tenant, you'll receive your 78,000 pounds. If you would like, you can lend that 78,000 pounds to us. And what we'll do is we will pay you an interest rate equivalent to what you're getting now. So we'll pay you a 4.3% interest rate on that 78,000 pounds. And of course that's brilliant for us because we can give security of a restriction on one of our properties, we can give a personal guarantee, but now we've got 78,000 pounds that we can go do some deals with. The um, vendor was really pleased about that because that meant that their income stream that they're relying on can continue. And of course, we've now turned a vendor 
into a finance investor, which is fantastic. We can use that 78K to put down as a deposit on a property. When I say a deposit, I don't mean a deposit for a mortgage. I mean a deposit to give some cash to a vendor finance deal. So we can use that as a down payment on a vendor finance deal and turn it into a no money deal for us. Or we can use that 78K as a refurb budget to improve a property before we flip it or rent it out, etc. So we've now got £78,000 potentially of finance investment that's not going to be um, secured on a, on a specific deal. We can split it into different pots. And that's all come about because we've got trust with the vendor, because we're looking to meet the vendor's needs to, to help them with their lifestyle. And so all of that, guys, one little episode from one tenant asking the letting agent if they can buy the property that they live in. And I always say, tell all your letting agents, we work with five, six, seven letting agents. They all know that I'm always interested in selling my properties. In fact, they'll have conversations with people when my properties fall empty. So when a tenant gives notice, they'll have conversations with potential buyers, knowing that even though I've not listed the properties for, for sale, that I would be interested in selling them. Guys, if you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the notification bell, click the subscribe button, and I'll see you on this channel very soon for a new episode. In the meantime, happy investing.